Hello and welcome to part one of our DepthKit live streaming series, which will teach you how to get DepthKit streams to appear live across various devices and networks. I'm Corey, and in this video, we'll start with the basics, local live streaming. Then in other videos, build on top of this to get DepthKit streams across networks and the internet. But first, what is DepthKit live streaming? The simplest DepthKit workflows use recordings where you record a DepthKit capture, edit, export, and load your capture into a rendering environment as file assets. Live streaming, on the other hand, is a workflow where the DepthKit app continuously streams data which is simultaneously received and rendered in your environment. A 2D analogy of this is the difference between uploading a video to YouTube versus streaming on Twitch or, as we'll see later, joining a video call. Live streaming is great for interaction, allowing the subject of your depth kit stream to react and respond to another person or an audience in real time. This could be applied to a live performance, a training session, or even a volumetric video call. How does depth kit live streaming work? How do we get what's needed to reconstruct a person from inside a capture volume into the rendering environment in real time? At the high level, we set up our hardware and DepthKit project, then adjust some parameters in DepthKit and enable live streaming. Then in a rendering environment, like Unity, we set up an object with the DepthKit expansion packages, but instead of playing a video clip, we use the DepthKit live stream player to receive the stream from DepthKit. In other tutorials, we'll show you how to modify this for other network topologies, but for now, we'll keep things all on one computer. There are some considerations to keep in mind for live streaming. For example, there's no post-production in live stream workflows, meaning that tools that improve quality, like refinement, are not used. Simultaneous recording and live streaming is possible, but it may require a computer with higher performance than one which only captures. More specifically, local live streaming, meaning streaming from DepthKit to another application on the same computer, also has its own considerations. This is obviously the topology with the least latency, for example. Also, since it all runs on one computer, you don't need items like network routers, switches, or even an internet connection to get the stream from DepthKit to Unity. What you'll need is a PC to run DepthKit in Unity, and you can refer to our documentation for the recommended specs. You'll also need DepthKit, which is available to download on our website, as well as a DepthKit license, which supports live streaming, like DepthKit Studio. You'll need sensors, as well as the necessary accessories and cables, and if you're using multiple sensors, you'll need sync cables and a calibration chart. On the rendering side, you'll need a supported version of Unity, as well as the DepthKit expansion packages, which are also available for download on our website. The first part of this process is to set up DepthKit to send out the live stream. I've opened up DepthKit and I'm logged in with a DepthKit Studio license, which supports live streaming. <clears throat> and instead of creating a new project, I'm gonna use one that already has a DepthKit Studio calibration in it. If you're only using a single sensor, you'll be streaming out of the record context, but if you're using multiple sensors, you'll be streaming out of the studio calibration and recording context. So as you can see here, I have a DepthKit Studio calibration that connects all six of my sensors here, and it's showing some pretty good metrics. Once you have a good multicam calibration, you can configure sensor options like the color and depth resolution. Since this computer supports it, I'm going to switch the color resolution to 1440p and keep the depth mode at 640 by 576 narrow raw. I'm going to apply this to all sensors. Next, we can start streaming. So the first thing I want to do is adjust exposure and white balance for all the sensors. Currently, it's set to automatic. So I'm going to disable auto, and these settings are about what I want for my stage. Bring the white balance down a little bit, and I'll apply this to all sensors as well. And this will make the exposure uniform for all of the sensors. The next step that I want to do is adjust the near and far clipping planes. You can see from the 3D viewport that I'm getting a lot of background geometry that I don't actually want to be part of my stream. So one sensor at a time, I'm going to adjust these far planes and for the corner sensors, the near planes as well, to better isolate the center of my volume. I find it's helpful to look at this from overhead so that you can easily see where the planes are clipping off the geometry. Now that I've adjusted the near and far planes, you can see 
<clears throat> all of that extra background geometry is no longer part of the scene. There's also this floor plane, which is still in here, but because that's perfectly parallel to the floor plane in my calibration, we can actually remove that later in Unity. And the same goes for this uh, backdrop here. Because it's perpendicular, I'll be able to remove that as well. Now we can enable live streaming. To do that, go into the Edit menu, open up Preferences, and this Enable Record Context Live Stream box, we can just check that. The default name for the stream is DepthKit. You can customize this if you like, but we'll leave it set to DepthKit for now. And then these Live Output Texture Maximum Width and Height parameters, uh, they determine a sort of balance between performance and quality. I'm going to set them to 4096 by 4096. And click Save. Now DeathKit is going to restart the streams from the sensors. And now that it's restarted, we have an indication up here that the live stream is active. In the exports folder of the project bin, there's now this live stream multicam metadata file. We'll need that later to set up Unity. One other quick thing worth noting here is that while live streaming, both the color and depth resolution are locked, but the depth range is also locked. So if you want to change those, you can go back into preferences, disable live streaming, make your adjustments, and then re-enable live streaming. And you'll need to take your updated metadata into Unity as well. The next step is to create our Unity project. I'm going to create a new project here. Make sure that I'm using the a supported version of Unity, in this case 2020.3.44. And although we can use the scriptable render pipelines like HDRP and URP, I'm going to keep them simple and just use the built-in render pipeline 3D preset. So normally we would start with adding the DepthKit expansion packages, but we actually need to add a dependency first. Um, and that is because our friend Kajiro Takahashi uh, maintains a repository that enables Spout uh, to be input into Unity. And that allows DevKit to share its live stream with Unity. So we're going to add that package from Kajiro first. So I'll go to the Package Manager, click on this gear cog, and click Advanced Project Settings. We need to fill this registry information out with Kajira's registry information. And you can find that in a couple places, either in our live streaming documentation right here, or you can go to Kajira's GitHub repository. And the required information is also here. So I'm just going to copy this. And click Save. And X out of that. And now there should be a My Registries filter at the top. And if you've done everything right, then these packages from Kajira's repository should appear. You'll need this before you import the DevKit Livestream package. Next, let's import the DevKit packages. I'm going to add them from disk. Start with DevKit Core. DevKit Studio. You can see these have loaded into the project. Uh, if we were using a scriptable render pipeline, I would also add the DevKit Core and Studio Visual Effects Graph and Shader Graph packages, but we don't need those because we're in the 3D pipeline, built in render pipeline. And now I'm also going to add the DevKit Live package. If this package fails to load and you get an error in the console, it's usually because the Kajiro package is not installed properly. So make sure that that dependency is there. Next, let's bring in the metadata file from our exports folder. And we're going to create a new object in our hierarchy. I'm going to call it DepthKit. And in the components, I'm going to filter by depth kit and add a depth kit clip as well as a depth kit studio built in look. If you're only using a single sensor, then use the depth kit core built in look. 
If you're using one of the under, other render pipelines, then you'll need a different look. Um, for example, the shader graph look, but for multiple sensors in the built-in render pipeline, we're going to use the studio built-in look. Now I can connect the metadata with this object, and instead of using the video player, we're going to switch this to the live stream player. Now you can see some geometry already started rendering in my scene. If it didn't, there's usually one of two things happening. One is this spout receiver object needs to match the name of the spout stream specified in DepthKit's preferences. So if you've changed that to anything other than DepthKit, make sure you select the proper name here. The other thing that may happen is if your near and far planes are set very wide, this bounding box will be very large and uh, your computer may not have enough resources to render such a large volume. What you can do is grab these handles at the edge of the box and bring the walls of the bounding box in closer to the center. And then after you make those adjustments, be sure to hit the set surface buffer capacity. Now, although the live stream is being received, it is also not refreshing very quickly. The frame rate is very slow. So Unity is trying to render at a very, very high frame rate. One quick clarification while I edit this. The high Unity frame rate, combined with DepthKit running in the background, is saturating some of the PC's resources, which can cause the performance of the background application to drop. As you'll see in a second, reducing Unity's frame rate will free up some of those resources so that DepthKit can stream more performantly in the background. See the Unity troubleshooting section of our documentation for more details. And so one performance optimization that we can make to fix that is a frame rate limiting script. You can find this in our documentation. But I'm basically just going to create a limiter object and then attach this script to it. And now when I hit play, you can see we're rendering at 30 frames per second. All right, now that that's all set up, we can take a step inside of our volume. I'm going to set the surface buffer again. Setting the surface buffer capacity ensures that there's enough memory allocated to draw all the triangles in the stream. And that might change depending on how many people are in your scene or how complex the geometry of your scene is. If you ever see missing geometry, it's often due to surface buffer being set too small. So hitting that surface buffer button uh, samples the current number of triangles in the scene and sets the buffer appropriately. It's always best to set the surface buffer when you have a person in the volume or the number of people in the volume that you will be live streaming. And there I am, being live streamed in 3D. From here I can do things like further trim out some of the excess geometry in the scene using the bounding box, as well as dial in my mesh reconstruction settings as well as my texture settings. Another thing I can do, as I mentioned earlier, is bring the floor plane in to get rid of that remaining floor geometry. Now the floor is all cleaned up. Another thing to call out here is that as I change these settings, these will get lost if I uh, hit the play button again and get out of play mode. So what you can do is, if you adjust any of the components, make sure you copy the component, then exit play mode, and then paste component values, and that will preserve all of the changes that you made while you were in play mode. So with this done, we've basically built the entire DepthKit local live streaming pipeline from end to end, and from here you can apply visual effects and change your render pipeline or build a standalone app for Windows. In follow-up videos in this series, we'll show you how to expand this pipeline to get DepthKit across local networks and across the internet. Uh, so stay tuned for those, and thanks for watching.